Hello everybody, welcome back to Cobra Daytona Build. Um, on this episode, I've had someone ask me about my entire cooling setup and the system I set up and how I did it. I didn't go into great detail on everything, but I figured now since it's done, I'm gonna show you exactly what I've done. So, um, follow along. Um, as you can see, I got the radiator mounted in the normal spot. I've got the Breeze fan shroud with the Factory 5 provided fan. Uh, pretty straightforward, nothing out of the ordinary. I've got the uh, AC condenser here, which is a factory five piece. I did have to grind this edge off to get it to fit in here because it had this big old bracket on the outer edge. I'm guessing to bolt it down in the normal configuration. Um, other than that, it's straightforward. Everything fits perfect. Uh, this hose inside, this hose outside. Um, there will actually be more details on that in my AC video, which will follow. Um, these are the cool tubes. I forget the name of the company, but if you go to the Factory 5 Forum. He's a sponsor. They're fabulous. Um, and then I'm using the heat shrink uh, tube connectors, and then the Breeze tubes come with these. So from here, uh, actually, we'll finish up inside here first before we go on. This is a KRC power steering cooler. I'm running AN fittings. I just uh, basically drilled a hole through here. I didn't want to put double bulkhead fittings. So it comes out. And as you can see, I come out of the power steering, uh, the rack here goes into that. And then on the other side, we'll come over into here. The hose just kind of wraps around and goes up into the return. Um, the feed kind of flows back underneath and into the rack. So that kind of covers that. Uh, for the radiator, we come out of the top here, which comes from the road, uh, engine this way, I believe. Uh, comes around here into this hose. This hose is actually with the Factory 5 Coyote install kit. It fits perfect. Um, and Paul on the forum actually was the guinea pig with this and said, yeah, it's almost like it's meant to be. And it is pretty nice. I mean, it fits in there, no issues. Um, I did cut off, uh, Ford uses this plastic crimp thing there to kind of keep the hose on there fitting. I cut that off with a high speed and put one of the shrink wrap because as you can see in here, it's a very, very tight fit. Let me uh, show you around the other side. Um, hopefully you can see I don't know what you can see I'm holding the camera down inside there But it is a tight tight fit but if I shove down on it, it doesn't hit but it is tight um, Lower radiator hose. That's another story. So I come out of here I'm running these a heat shrink on most of them this one I kept uh, the standard hose clamp just in case I ever take it off These things are a real bugger to get off you got to cut them off and usually it ruins the hose from what I'm finding But the this is not another one of the cool tubes it runs down and forward and then it shoves right up into here. And the issue is, is the sway bar. So it looks like it's hitting, but there is about maybe a 32nd inch of a gap between the sway bar and it. The sway bar doesn't go up and down, it just rotates, so I'm good. But I did have to drop the sway bar down. Um, let me get these wires up and out of the way. So I did have to drop the sway bar down. I did that by, these holes are actually slotted into here. So it allows it to come down if you get rid of the washer. There's an actual washer in there. Well, the washer comes up against this and then it won't lower it more. You get rid of the washer there. There's still plenty of meat on the bolt on the bracket and you can drop this thing down, maybe an eighth of an inch. That's enough for clearance. Um, I don't know how factory five does it, but the cool tubes here make it very straightforward It's actually a nice fit. I did not run the heat shrink on this because I didn't really know how I was gonna get heat on the back side And I just figured you know what you can't see it anyhow run the clamps and be done with it So also in the cooling system, I'm running the Moroso tank here um, this tank has actually got multiple hoses going to it. One's from the bottom that goes into here. That's just a standard three-quarter inch hose. Um, I'm running uh, this heat shrink here. The other side, I think I have a regular hose clamp. Uh, the other hose comes from the front here. This one goes around and goes into the top of this neck thing here on the Coyote. And the other one comes out of here. It goes back under here to a bulkhead fitting. Um, and then it comes up into here into this AM line back over and into the top of the radiator. I think that's just to bleed air out of the uh, cooling system. That's because they've got a check valve in it, which I did. Let me go back and talk about that. This hose is actually a factory Ford hose. And you see that clamp right here? That's actually the check valve. It allows flow to go towards this, but not the other direction. So I think it allows air to get escape out, but not back in. Um, and it's tucked underneath there, you can't even see it. So kind of nice. As I said, then I've got my oil cooler. So this is the one where I kind of debated this for quite a ways. 
Um, I've got dash 10 fittings. They go into a bulkhead fitting down here, as you can see. They come up into both sides of the oil cooler. Don't know how much airflow I'm going to get in here. Don't even know if I need it. But if I do, I can do one of things. I could put a fan on here, pull air out of here, push it through, no big deal. Or I could actually cut a hole into here and run a duct, in like a NACA duct, up underneath the front skirt or something and pick up some air and jam it through that way too, which wouldn't be a bad thing if I need it. So the bulkhead fittings actually, you can't even see it. I don't want to get underneath the car right now. They're down below the rack. So if I have to hook this up, if the motor does need, um, you know, more cooling, I'll run the hoses down kind of along the bottom, maybe up and around this, and then they'll tie in to the, uh, where the oil, uh, okay, I can show you back up in here. Oh, there, yeah, the oil filter here will have a sandwich type uh, diverter type valve up in there, and that'll divert oil up to that oil cooler. Hopefully we don't need it. I never need it on the road, so that oil never got hot. But this thing will be on the track, so it might, you never know. I think that about covers the entire cooling system. As I said, the AC units, uh, it's now done and installed. I got another video coming up for that, but I've been getting a lot of questions on how this whole mess of stuff in here came about. And it actually is busy, but it's functional. Um, it's, it's pretty nice, so I'm hoping this whole thing works out. So I think that's it. So you, now you get an idea of the cooling system. If you have any questions, uh, shoot me a message. As I said, uh, there's a lot going on in there, a lot of braided lines, a lot of stuff. But hopefully it all works, and uh, we'll see. But uh, if you like this video, hit subscribe, and uh, we're looking forward to you on the next episode. So thanks, and have a good one.